On May 2nd, Endless Ocean received a rather surprising sequel. It was surprising because the last one came out in 2009, and I see very few people still talking about the series. Additionally, it was surprising because it wasn't particularly good. I made a video giving my initial thoughts with a plan to make a follow-up once I had completed the game. As I progressed through the story, though, I began to realize just how negative such a video would be. I don't particularly like videos wherein the entire premise is picking apart something the creator didn't like, and I had no interest in creating one. With that, I put down my Switch and moseyed on over to my bookshelf of the many games I bought and never played. I used to have a nasty habit of doing that. Now it's more of an occasional nuisance. My eye stopped on a game that I apparently bought for $5 from a local retro game store at... some point. Wild Earth African Safari. Now, if we take a look at the back of the box, we can clearly see that it is engaging in a very common marketing tactic at the time, making things look harrowing to a dishonest degree. The back of the box contains an image of a charging elephant and text saying, How much will you risk? How close can you get to get the perfect shot? While elephants can charge you and you do witness predation and the like, this all provides a rather action-packed view of a game that doesn't even have a health bar. Regular viewers of the channel, or just fans of Endless Ocean 1 and 2, may realize that a game about animals with no health bar sounds extremely up my alley. Before I show you that, though, I wanted to point out that any footage you're going to see of the game is from an emulator. I started the game on the Wii U, but I figured the higher resolution would be better for the video. The only issue I saw with emulating is that it doesn't properly save your photos. You'll notice the first mission of my save does have photos since it was on real hardware, but any subsequent missions just have black rectangles. There may be a way to fix this in Dolphin, but truthfully, I did not look that thoroughly. On to the game. We spend our entire time here in the Serengeti, but the maps still have a lot of variation. We even get to visit Ngorogoro Crater, which is the perfect setting for a wildlife photography game. Being a caldera, you have a very logical barrier to keep the player within the bounds of the map, as well as a diverse biome to explore. The other maps consist of throwing you to different elevations, times of day, and even modes of transportation. Since each of these levels are specifically authored, they have a sensible flow that takes you to memorable landmarks and events. Contrast this, if you will, with Luminous's almost absolute adherence to procedural generation. While it did have missions with set geometry, they were far from the focus of the game. As a result, when I think back on the maps in Luminous, I remember... I think one had a sunken ship. Back to Wild Earth, the gameplay is simple, yet effective. You have two NPCs that talk you through each mission. They tell you roughly where to go and what to photograph. While the camera doesn't have as many options as I'd like, only allowing the player the ability to zoom, the wide variety of things that you'll be photographing more than makes up for it. You may be asked to simply take a picture of an elephant, or your guides will be more specific, asking you to photograph the animals gouging trees, defending themselves, or anything from a long list of actions. This goes a long way towards breathing life into animals that otherwise look like pool inflatables. This is almost the polar opposite of Luminous, which had a much more fully featured camera, but basically no diegetic reason to use it. Similarly, it had much more gorgeous animal models, but they would rarely be doing anything other than moving in a set path. I like games that allow for education without it being the primary focus. Before I played Wild Earth, I wasn't familiar with Ngorogoro Crater. Hell, I didn't even know the Serengeti was a specific place and not just a type of biome. Since playing, I've enjoyed researching the area, the animals, and the people. If I do have one complaint, I would like there to have been more information or representation of Tanzanian people in the game. As it stands, the only humans you interact with are an American and a Brit. A common issue in American and European media depicting any area in Africa is the absence of people from that area. I don't think this ruins the game, obviously, since the point of the game is the animals, but I did think it was worth mentioning. At any rate, this puts it beyond luminous in my eyes, since the ecology of the Veiled Sea is absolute nonsense as a weak justification for an uninteresting, to me anyway, procedural generation system. Something that Blue World in particular excelled at was showing different biomes and how different life adapted to taking advantage of them. By mixing freshwater, brackish, and saltwater animals from all across the globe in the geologic timescale, Luminous loses out on nearly every opportunity for education or even immersion. The highlight of my time with Luminous was stumbling into a cave full of prehistoric animals. While I was excited to see a bunch of animals that weren't represented in the earlier two entries, it was severely let down by the problems that plagued the rest of the game. Here I was in a tiny portion of the map that made no sense paired with the rest of the level, tasked with scanning every individual animal, most of which were identical to ones I had already scanned. As you complete each of the missions in Wild Earth, you unlock a minigame. There are 11 of them, so they aren't all terrible. One of them, for example, is a rhythm game that I struggled with quite a bit. When my fiancé saw, she informed me that I had severely misread the instructions and proceeded to get double my score. Generally, the minigames are the weakest element of the game, but it is entirely skippable. The game doesn't stop giving you story missions until you've reached progressively higher scores and side content, like Luminous. 
If you're at all interested in wildlife photography, I'd recommend giving this one a go. I was able to complete it in three sessions and ended up going back to retry some of the missions I particularly liked. I do feel like this is an underserved genre, so if you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear them. I'd like to check out Africa on the PS3 someday, but damn. Additionally, this was a port of a Windows game that seems to have some minor differences, so I may check out that version. It also had a motion simulator version? What the hell? Anyway, thanks for listening to me ramble. Here's what happens when they let me drive the truck. You're gonna be driving and photographing at the same time, so this may take some getting used to. This should be a fun ride. Head down the dirt road when you're ready. Africa awaits.